Okay, welcome to part two of my Pale Blue Eyes special. Uh, you might have seen part one in which I looked at Lou Reed's nice and easy rhythm guitar part to this song. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on Sterling Morrison's parts. Uh, I'm going to look at the guitar solo and all of the, the lead guitar bits that he does throughout the song. Now, Sterling Morrison, actually one of my favourite guitar players of all time. He's just had that ability to come up with the perfect guitar part to support the song I think nothing too flashy but always kind of tasteful and, and interesting um, so let's check out what he's doing in this song so let me take you through this beautiful guitar part and uh, I'm going to divide this lesson up into three sections I'm going to be looking at the verse guitar part then at the chorus and then I'm going to take you through the solo as well but why don't we start with the opening guitar figure that kind of recurs throughout the song the bit that goes like this What we're dealing with here are sixths and uh, I've talked about sixths a little bit before in previous lessons but uh, basically we're playing a pair of notes here that are six notes apart in the musical alphabet so here for instance I'm playing a D and I'm playing a B and then I'm going down to, to a C and an A so they're six notes apart and they've got a particular kind of sound to them a kind of a sweet sweet kind of chiming sound um, so we're going to start with this shape here. It's the seventh fret on the G string and the seventh fret on the top string. I, I play these shapes with my second finger and with my third finger. And we're just rocking back and forth between the G string and the high E string like this. Playing that with a down and an up of the pick. The rhythm is just eighth notes. One and two and three and Then I'm just taking that same shape two frets lower down to the fifth fret. Just repeating that. So the rhythm is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so it's just on beat four that I'm going down to the fifth fret, then I'm back up to the seventh fret again. And one thing you're going to want to do is just add in some slides between those notes just to make it sound a little bit smoother. So you can slide into that first note. Um, and then you can slide down from the 7th fret to the 5th fret and then back up into the 7th fret again. Um, something like that. So that's the, uh, the opening lick to the song and it's also played throughout the verses. Whenever um, the rhythm guitar part is playing a G chord, um, Sterling is usually playing that little figure there which kind of outlines that G G kind of a, a harmony but let's get into the verse part of the song then um, uh, what I've done is I've recorded the chords into my looper pedal um, so I'm just going to set that going so um, you've got some kind of context for this lead guitar part I'm just going to play through the whole verse section so uh... <laughs> So that's, that's the verse um, part of the song. And notice that it's all really played on the top three strings and um, Sterling Morrison is kind of playing um, little double stops or three note chords and kind of little melodies, um, all reflecting the basic harmony that, that Lou is laying down in the, the, the rhythm guitar part. So um, we start with um, what I just showed you, the, the introductory kind of lick to the song. So we've got... Um, Um, and then there's just an, an open string you can hear there, an open open G string at the end of that phrase, just really just a kind of a, a note just to bridge the gap while you're moving up to the to the next chord. Um, and then the, the harmony changes to C, and uh, Sterling Morrison is playing this, uh, and and this is all based off of a, a kind of a C triad shape played on the top three strings. So. 
um, that's the the ninth fret on the G and then the eighth fret on the on the top two strings and we're kind of sliding into that uh, the G string and then the top string then we've got a hammer on from 8 to 10 on the B playing the top string and then the tenth fret on the B again lifting up the third finger um, and then we've got uh, the G and the B so Again, all just reflecting that C chord sound. Uh, then we're back to this. Uh, then the, the, the rhythm guitar changes to an E minor and you can hear this little kind of bending lick. So we're bending the 12th fret on the, the third string and it's kind of a uh, it's, it's not even really in tune particularly, it's a slightly dissonant bend, it's maybe maybe one fret, maybe a bit more than that, just bending that up, uh, then playing the 12th fret on the B and then playing that 12th fret on the G unbent again. So that's played over the E minor, kind of a bluesy lick I suppose. Uh, then we've got This is over the A minor to the C. Over the A minor we've just got, that's our sixth shape at the fifth fret. We're playing the G, high E, G, little open string passing note, then into our little C triad shape again. Uh, this time we're playing the G, the top string, and we've got a little hammer on at the tenth fret on the top string. Um, then back to G and back to this. Um, and then over the C to the D, we've got this. So it, it's really kind of more triad shapes. We've got a, a C going up to uh, a D and we're just playing the, the, the third string and the top string. And then a little hammer on with the third finger. Then up two frets, the same thing. And then back to this. That's the, the entire verse part. Then we're into the, the chorus, which um, let me just play that through for you. So uh, remember that the chorus chords are just D for two bars, and then G for two bars, and uh, Sterling Morrison is playing something like this. D chord, it's more of this kind of uh, embellished triad stuff. So we've got our D triad shape and we're going. So that's the third string, the top string, hammer on on the B string, then the top string again, then a hammer on on the B, uh, back to the tenth fret on the B, then it's the third string and the top string. So. Then we're continuing in the next bar with that's the B string, the G, then the then the high E and the B, and then we've got 12 to 10 on the top string, and then a hammer on from 10 to 12 on the B, and then 10th fret on the B. So, so all of those two bars of, of the D, it's um. We'll try and write all of this out in music and tab. So if you're uh, struggling to, to to keep up with all of these notes flying around, then uh, do do check that out, and you can uh, go through that at your at your own leisure. Um, so that's our D part. Then uh, over the G in the chorus, it's just back to our our basic main riff. Then it just repeats.
and that's really the the chorus part to the to the song um, I'm just going to sort of take you through the first verse and the first chorus all of the other verses and choruses are pretty much the same you if you listen closely you can hear a few details that are different you might sort of elaborate these uh, triad shapes slightly differently some of the rhythms might be slightly different but it's all basically the same thing um, if, if you want to you can uh, listen to the original recording and um, try and get some of those variations down if, if, if you'd like to so um, well just just before we get into the solo then let me just play put all of that together I'm going to play the verse again and I'm going to play the chorus as well just so you can hear how it all fits together so um <laughs> So let's um let's get into the solo then. Um, and uh, sh sh let me take it through you first. Take take you through it first. Then then I'll play play the whole thing. Otherwise, this lesson is going to go on for for far too far too long. Um, so I'm just going to take you through this quite quickly, phrase by phrase. Um, I will uh, again. I will write all of this out in music and tab. So uh, if I go through it a bit too quickly for you now, then uh, you can always check that out. Um, a, bit, a bit later on. So um, starting off um, up here in the 15th position with some kind of G minor pentatonic type ideas so that the first little lick we've got something like that. So it's 15th fret on the B, 15th fret on the top string, 18th fret on the B, 15 on the B to 17 on the G, and a little double stop at the 15th fret on the B and the G, just, just bending that slightly. Then we're on to the D string, 17th fret, then hammer on, pick it again, 15, 17. Then we've got more kind of a G. G minor pentatonic -y, bluesy stuff. So 17th fret on the G. Then it double stops at the 17th fret and the 15th fret on the B and the G. Then onto the D string. 17, 15, 17. And then 15 on the G. On the B, back to the G. Just bending that slightly sharp. And then the 17th fret on the D. Then we have this um, just little sort of hammer on thing. So hammering on from 15 to 17 on the A, on the D, then 15 on the G, 17 on the D. Next lick is this. So it's 15th fret on the top string, then on the B string. Then we've got a bend at the 17th fret on the uh, G. Again, it's, it's kind of a one fret bend, maybe a one and one and a half fret bend at the 17th fret. So we're bending that up, then picking again, releasing the bend, playing the 15th fret on the, the G. Um, then we're really playing the same lick, um, three frets lower. But adding in an extra note there, the 14th fret on the D. So we're kind of moving away from the G minor pentatonic there. Um, this is when um, the harmony changes to E minor. So, so you could kind of see it as 
you know, Sterling Morrison is following the harmony with the scale, so he's going down to a kind of E minor sound over the E minor chord. Then we, we stay in this position for the next lick, which is just this. So that's 14th fret on the G, hammering from 12 to 14 on the G, back to 12, then we've got a bend, a bend and release at the 13th fret on the B, hammering from 12 to 13 on the B, 12 on the B, back to 12 on the G, then we have this, um, and we're kind of sliding down here, so sliding from 12 to 10 on the G, and then 12 on the D, 10 on the G, hammering on to 12, picking that note again, and then 10th fret twice. And then we've got this, um, and this is over the C uh, to D chord changes, so again we're kind of outlining the chord changes with this part, so we've got kind of holding down a little C chord shape here, it's 10th fret on the D, 8th fret on the top string, and then a hammering on from 7 to, uh, no, from 8 to 9 on the G, and then playing the top string again, little bluesy hammer on I suppose there, then moving that shape up two frets, uh, kind of a D sound, just playing the D string, uh, then the high E, the B, back to the high E, um, then we're back, back to this. G chord, just our main main figure. Um, so, incidentally, all, all of this solo, the, the chords it's played over is, is the chords to, to the verse and then to the chorus, so it's, it's like an instrumental verse um, and an, an instrumental chorus. So here, here we're into the second half of the solo, which is played over the chorus chords. Um, so we, we hit we hit the kind of the chorus harmony here on the D and, and we get this. Um, Over the, uh, the the D chord, and it's more of these six. So we've got eleventh fret on the G and tenth fret on the top string, up to the fourteenth fret on the G in the top string, and then two frets lower to the twelfth fret. And the rhythm is kind of. Then we're back into our D shape here, and this is a, sort of adding in extra notes to a D triad here, so it's 11th fret on the G, 10 on the top string, 11th fret on the G, and then we've got, um, this is the 14th to the 12th fret on the top string, and then a little hammer on from 10 to 12 on the B, back to the 10th fret. So very similar to the main chorus part, we've just got some extra higher notes here. Then back to this. Uh, then it all just repeats. really the end of the solo, then it goes on into the to the next verse. So um, let me play all of that through for you. I'll just set my looper going and we'll see how this how this works out. Um,
something along those lines. Well, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy learning to play this song. Um, obviously, this particular guitar part is great to play along with another guitarist. So if you've got a guitar playing friend, grab them. They can be Lou, you can be Sterling, and uh, you can make some, some beautiful music together. Um, but uh, that's it for this video. Um, if you want to see more of this kind of thing, do check out my website where there are many, many more uh, guitar lessons. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.